Good morning, dear friends. Here we are for another study of the book Right Path by the Spirit Emmanuel through the medium Francisco Candido Xavier. Good morning. My name is Shane Martin. We are here today to talk to you about chapter 12 that is titled Safety. And please make sure you join us in spreading the good news of Jesus and join us every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I am going to read the chapter for us and then we are going to make some comments and bring some aspects for our reflection this morning. And then at the end, we're going to do a, our final prayer. So make sure you have a water bottle with you so we can treat this time as our gospel at home time where we always recommend we do a reading of inspirational content message or in this case a chapter of the book right path and then we will do comments and see how those teachings of Emmanuel apply to our daily lives and then we're going to end with a prayer so in this chapter 12 titled safety Emmanuel starts lack of safety is the state of mind of which countless patients complain in medical offices and of legions of creatures complain, who confess to be distressed when faced with the problems of life. The person or a person aspires to possess a particular house, to land a certain job, to conquer efficiency and success in carrying out a particular business. In essence, however, the creature does not only want a house, but a home where it can freely express its own decisions. A person does not simply long to overcome a material burden but the opportunity to show oneself as one really is in order to be the best that he or she can. A person does not exclusively seek to conquer financial resources, but longs to acquire the certainty that it lives indiscriminately from the threat of material difficulties. Recognize urgently that all acquisitions at their origin come from superior powers in whose performance we personalize divine providence. Security comes from the intangible mechanism of our circumstances since by offering others the best of ourselves we will receive from others the best that they are capable of. Meditating on this, we consecrate ourselves to the general good and a broader sum of good will arise for the support of our immediate possibilities. Serve someone and the someone with all the resources that support his or her existence will be induced to serve you. Let us spontaneously donate something of ourselves and we will automatically receive whatever we have given. Act in favor of this or that cause, and that same cause by the forces that represent it will act in your favor. Let us abstain from any uncertainty as to tomorrow, which may come and be far or near. All safety comes from God alone. Hence, the opportunity to remember the word of the Divine Master in the unforgettable warning, quote, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. This is in, unquote, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, the English Standard Version of the Bible. And here we are, chapter 12, Right Path by Emmanuel. Take a deep breath in. 
take a deep breath out. So I'm going to invite you to reflect with me in some of the aspects of this teaching. So the title is safety. Question number one, do you feel safe today? Safety as in we know that safety and security comes from God at the end of the chapter. Do you feel safe where you are? Have you been looking for safety in the material things all around you? Or are we feeling safe just with the knowledge that everything good comes from God and he has or she has our back? And just the blessings of being here today are enough for us to feel the safety that we are cared for each and every day. I hope that you are this morning feeling safe and that we can be discussing the topic today. Because if you're not feeling safe, you're not, if you have lack of safety or this perceived lack of safety, and Emmanuel says to us, is the state of mind for, of which from countless patients complains in medical offices, a lot of people feel unsafe or if they feel lack of safety and security, and then they will go to the medical offices with many different ailments that maybe have their root cause in the stresses of the obligations and the preoccupations that we have in securing things for us. And he says here, a person aspires to possess a house, to have a job, to conquer efficiency and carry out a business. Is that wrong? You are an immortal spirit living a physical existence. There, are, These are things we have to do. We would like to have shelter. We would like to have um, a job and provide for our families and to have safety. So there's nothing wrong with wanting a house or a job. But he's saying here, in, in our essence, however, the creature, us, do not only want a house, but we want a home. Regardless of where you are, you are in the world, you want the house, the physical house that houses you, you and your family, if you have one, to actually be a home, which is more encompassing, is where you feel safe and secure. A place where you can freely express your own decisions in your home. You set the tone. You set the tone to say, in my home, these are the things that will happen and these are the things that won't happen. And hopefully, when we set our tones, we have the divine laws in our mind and our values that we live by will be reflected in the understanding that as a divine being, or to be divine, we are divine, we come from God. As an immortal soul today, we are here to fulfill God's law, so my values will reflect the laws that we find in the third part of this spiritual book. Integrity, honesty, caring for one another, for example, the law of society, living in society and serving our fellow beings in society. He says here, a person does not want to simply to overcome a material burden, but the opportunity to show oneself as we really are. And one does not exclusively seek to conquer financial resources, but we long to acquire the certainty that we will live free from the threat of material difficulties. Of course, we want a home and feel safe and sheltered. We don't want to be out on the street homeless. We want a job where we can show our own truly selves and our values and how we care for one another and how we care for the planet. We want to have meaning. And he's saying here, of course, we want not only to conquer the financial resources, but we want to feel safe from the threat when the financial resources are in here. Because we live a physical existence and on the earth, shelter, food, clothing, and financial resources are not a given. So we work for those things. We long for those things as part of all of us. And now the warning. He says, recognize ur urgently that all acquisitions at their own or at their origins come from superior powers in whose performance we personalize divine 
providence. If you go to the book Genesis, there's a chapter that talks about God. In the first part, I believe it's chapter 3. And I'll put the reference down below for you. I'll put the link to the International Spiritist Council link so that you can get that book in a PDF format or you can purchase it whatever good books are sold. If you go in there, there's a whole chapter about God, God's characteristics that mirrors and complements the definition of God in the Spirit's book. But there's also one chapter or sub, sub chapter about divine providence and divine providence is goodness emanating all throughout the universe and in that book Kardec reminds us that divine providence is there for everyone from the most imperfect spirits to all the way to the pure spirits which is the the scale of spirits the hierarchy of spirits in the spirits book that you can find there and then Kardec re describes, and the good spirits describe, of course, Kardec is describing the teachings of the superior spirits. The divine providences radiate goodness and resources all throughout the universe. The difference is that superior spirits can capture it at a higher level and more intensity than you and I can. So if we can capture and we can feel that the acquisitions come from this divine providence, they are blessings of God. God is giving you concessions so that you can fulfill your mission on this planet. So we can open our minds and hearts and souls to perceive the abundance of goodness that reigns on the universe so that you and I, you and I can feel safe in spite of being distressed perhaps by material difficulties in this life or difficulties in general in this life so i hope that you can feel this in you more than just knowing knowing is the first step knowing that you are here with a mission telling everyone you know and love stay be resilient i love you god loves you you're here for a mission go to chapter five and go look at divine support. And you go study chapter 5 of this book. God put you in the universe. Put all of us, each and every one of us with a unique mission. And our, as we go in progress, we get to know more of this mission. Especially when we get to be superior spirits. But right now we are purifying ourselves. We are siffling through our difficulties and differences and imperfections. We are working on it. In each and every moment, in each and every reincarnation is an opportunity to grow. And he says here, how does this safety come? The safety comes from God. And we can perceive this safety and the resources, the abundance of resources from divine providence. He says here, safety comes from the intangible me mechanism of our circumstances. Since by offering others the best of ourselves, we will receive from others the best they're capable of. Give generously your love and your kindness and help your fellow beings and the best of them will come to you. He says, meditating on this, Knowing of this, we meditate. And when we meditate on this, we consecrate ourselves to the general good. Yes, dear friends, we're not here only to earn, yearn for a house, long for a job, and provide only for ourselves and our immediate circle. We are here to consecrate ourselves to the general good. And by saying that, I'm inviting you to remove yourself from our own needs from your own needs and look around and see what the general goodness good needs we are very fortunate in the u.s with abundance of resources but other places on the earth there has less resources maybe we could you and i could give up some of the niceness that we have in the comfort creature comforts that we have here and then maybe donate some of our resources to those who have less. What about that? Maybe we can do more. Emmanuel continues. He says, serve this person or that person with all the resources that will support his or her existence or their existences. And they will be 
invited or induced to serve you. Does that mean we're going to do something expecting something in return? No. But when we help others, we are almost having this credit throughout our lifetimes when we help one another. Do you know, I'm going to mix this with another book from Andrea Luiz in the book Nosso Lar. When Andrea Luiz is describing his experience in Nosso Lar, he meets with a minister Clarencio. And then there, on his first um, conversation, an audience with the minister, he is invited to serve in the colony. He feels the need to serve. And then before he's talking to Clarencio, he observes the conversation of the minister with another lady. And she's also asking to serve, but she hasn't served. Therefore, she can be granted her request. And throughout the conversation, if you go to the book, you're going to see that Andrea Luis brings to us the knowledge that when you are in community and you are doing the best you can, you gain friendships, you gain alliances. And later, continuing in the book, the work he did helping nurse Narcisa will be the same way that he can gain that friendship and he can give to the fellow beings that are arriving in distress in North Solar. When he returns to the earth and finds his family different from what he expected, you will see that he prays. And the first person that comes to mind is Narcisa. And because they they helped one another through the works in North Solar, he was able to summon her help. But he had to gain, he had to work for that alliance, he had to have the merit for that alliance. So when we help, we consecrate ourselves to the good. When we give our resources to support other people, they will be induced later to do goodness. Another example from Nosolar, this is not a discussion about Nosolar, but I want to illustrate this message. Andrea Luis was um, with them, in that meeting with Claudia, so he is reminded that he was a physician on the earth and here on the earth we treat physicians as their gods they actually they're, they're physiologists they, they provide a very important service to all of us by knowing of the physiology of the body and how to fix things when they go wrong and there he learns that he was granted this opportunity to serve his fellow beings yet he was a uh, he was focused more on gaining material resources and status and power and Clarence reminds that that was a state of medicine at the time as well, such as today, but we're changing. However, from all the pro bono work he did, even though he didn't do it with this kind, Andrea Luis did, and although he was reminded that he didn't do it with the kindness of his heart, he just did it because the people couldn't buy, buy or pay for his services. For the little work he did pro bono, a few of those folks remembered him and the relief of their suffering he provided with his pro bono work that after his passing, even though it was more uh, about a decade after his passing, they were still thankful and he was still reaping the benefits of their prayers because of the things he did on their behalf. And that's how you and I can do it. It's not a quid pro quo. It's not like you're going to do something so you can receive something. But if it's really meaningful, it's really coming from the heart. Later, we will have those spiritual credits and resources and the folks we helped may be in a position to help you and I. So let's do that. Emmanuel says, let us spontaneously donate something of ourselves and we will automatically receive whatever we are given. Donate, donate love, donate kindness, donate physical things if you're able to do so. Relieve the suffering of someone. Because whatever you give out is what you bring in. Go to the book Foreign Life. Go to the book um, Mechanisms of Mediumship. It's just not here. It is some money. But it is who are you? How can I serve you? How can I love you more? In those two books, you're going to see the thought is life. And when you think of goodness, when you uh, think of something, it triggers ideas and emotions on you. Emotions and ideas and then actions. That is the mechanism, thoughts emotions, ideas, and actions. And then whatever you are emanating to the universe, that wave of goodness will go out throughout the universal cosmic fluid and attune with like-minded folks who are also doing goodness and that is going to come back to you in the form of goodness as well. 
and goodwill. He says, all, let us abstain from any uncertainty because tomorrow may be far be near. So it's about today, friends. Today you commit to do the good. Today you know of these. Don't think about and be guilty about what you've done. Watch, observe, learn, and move on. Today you and I are taking this time to study. And today you know of these. Whatever you give out in terms of goodness is what is going to come back to you. So commit today to know that whatever you do, you're going to reap the benefits of it. He says tomorrow may come, but don't focus on the uncertainty. Focus on what good can you do today. And the good spirits will support you because the good spirits are attuned with goodness. So make the choice of attuning with goodness. Later, Last but not least, he says, all security comes from God alone. And from Bible Gateway, the quote is, First, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you can be found in Matthew 6, verse 33. This is the opportunity for us to remember that Jesus told us back then, Seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness and the things will come to you. I hope, dear friends, this was a useful opportunity for us to ask more of ourselves and to plant the seed of service in our lives so one day we can reap the fruits of this beautiful tree of goodness. So I hope that now, as we come to the end of our studies, bring your water bottle next to you. Join me on a prayer. And as you join me on a prayer, the invitation is for you to close your eyes if it's safe for you to do so and to repeat the words of the prayer in your thoughts so we can augment the power of the prayer. Shall we? Dear Mother, Father God, what a blessing to be here today. And today we thank you for all the goodness, for all the beauty that surround us, for all the blessings that we have in our lives, those we can see and those we still can't perceive. Dear God, we thank you for all you do for us, for the presence of our family with us, for the house that is our home, for the job that support us, for the blessings and aptitudes that we have developed. We thank you, dear God, for this reincarnation and for the opportunity of living this physical existence. We thank and bless our physical bodies and our spiritual bodies as vessels where we can impart and act your goodness in the world. Dear God, we pray today for inspiration and for the support we need to do the good, to visualize the good, and for us to have the moments of inspiration and kindness towards one another. Please, dear God, guide our actions, our words, and our hands, our feelings and thoughts towards helping our fellow human beings. Today we are blessed with the opportunity of study and we pray that this moment of reflection may benefit all of those in our families, may benefit our friends, our co-workers and all of those beings in humanity we still yet do not know. We pray, dear God, that you can guide our actions today towards a more mindful, and good world. Dear God, may your divine providence be felt everywhere in the universe and may it soothe us, may it support us through our difficulties in our lives. And we pray that we are able to fulfill your will for us in this lifetime. We ask you for your blessing. We ask you for your guidance. And with your permission, 
and protection. We end our studies today. And so be it. Dear friends, thank you so very much for being with me today. And I hope that you can join me again in another study of the book Right Path by the Spirit Emmanuel next Tuesday at 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. And until then, I wish you many, many blessings. Mm -hmm.